All right, you bunch of yahoos, strap yourselves in for another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. In other words, shut up, sit up, and pay attention. Hello, everybody. This is Don from the Predator Fry. Uh, we have another Double D's in your face Q&A here. My guest is Art Del Cueto. He's the, uh, you the VP or the president of the uh, union? I'm the national vice president. Oh, the national vice president. Forgive me. Uh, and and I've uh, sent somebody over to break my legs, you know, my kneecaps. Uh, no, you- uh, Dan Severn. Dan Severn's not here today, folks. I'm sorry, but Dan had a uh, terrible accident today. And um, we're all praying for him. And um, we ask you all to say a prayer for him because um, Dan, Dan was in Ohio and was touring a marshmallow factory and uh, fell into that and uh, ate his way out and OD'd. And um, he, he's, he's kind of coming, you know, give and take, come and go. Um, uh, yeah, but he's pulling through. If You know, you all give us a good prayer. And I know Dan's tough enough to pull through and he'll get the rest of the marshmallow off of him. And uh, all he needs to do is take, you know, a real good, big dump and uh he'll feel better so uh with that said welcome welcome here to toxic masculinity let's get after it art who's fucking up our border down south there man the thing's a <laughs> fucking mess it, it is a mess man and it's it's the policies of the current administration Look, I've seen, I've worked through different administrations and I understand it. Like you can get one administration, a new one comes in and they have different policies and they'll say mine work better than his or whatever it may be. But yeah, they're they're perpetuating that. They're perpetuating that lie right now. And everybody, you know, everybody sees through it because it's fucking stupid. You know, it's ridiculous, but they keep fucking saying it like somebody's eventually going to believe it. Well, see, the problem is we, we have a new administration that just came in and they were so upset over the last administration's mean tweets. Right. That what they decided to say is his policies didn't work because he had mean, mean tweets. So let's get rid of them. But they didn't replace them with anything. It's just it's a free for all right now. And, and that's and, and through rhetoric alone, they said, hey, if you come across and you ask for asylum, we're going to look at every case. But while we're gonna, while we're waiting to look at the case, we're gonna release you in the United States, yeah. and that's what they're doing. They're releasing everyone, and a lot of their court dates. And this is, I, I, I found this out, and I've been telling people about it, and it, it's a real eye opener. And people freak out when I tell them this: the court dates that they're giving these individuals to come and present their immigration case is eighty-five months away. Eighty-five, 85 months. months? That's stupid. That is ridiculous. What was that? Ten years? It's 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 close to six and a half years. They're they're never going to show up. No, no they're just never going to show up. No, I mean they, they they can be done with a bankruptcy by then, right? <laughs> well, I mean, or, or you're going to put them eighty seven thousand IRS guys to work? Yeah, yeah. Well, only on those people who work for a living, you know, the the middle class. Yeah, that's that's the problem. And look, people say, well, how is it? Because I keep telling the people, I'm on the news and I say, look, the cartels control everything. Yeah. And they say, well, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a stretch. I say, it isn't a stretch. The cartels, what they do is they know where the groups are going to come in. They, they gather them. They throw them through one area, knowing that they turn themselves in. And then they tell them, look, you turn yourself in, you're not going to get sent back. Just say you're asking for asylum. So that's what they do. They come across. Now, Border Patrol agents have to go to that area. They have to respond, transport, process. Sometimes they got to take them to the hospital and they got to do hospital watches. And the cartels see that. So when the cartels see agents preoccupied with that and they, they leave the area, that's when they take advantage and they start bringing the drugs across. That's why we have so many drugs in, in, in the country right now. It's just they know strategically how to bring them in. Oh, Strategically, it's simple. You know, it's simple math. If uh, the, the people are over here, we go here, you know? Yeah, and it's been nonstop. It's been nonstop this whole, this whole time. Look, like the, the day that President Biden took office, uh, when he was going to get sworn in, 
that night there was a group of 300 that came across in, in Southern Arizona before he even took oath, his oath and because they knew they knew it was a free for all and it's been nonstop and it's continued to happen. And, you know, you got the people that, that want to lie about it and you have other individuals like the news media is a big problem sometimes too. I'll, I'll admit it. I've oh, asked, man. I've asked them to come out here and look because so Tucson sector, which is where we're at, it includes from New Mexico all the way into the reservation uh, close to Yuma. They're in there. That area is called the Tucson sector on the border. Mm -hmm. And it's the number one area in the country when it comes to gotaways. It's just people that are coming through. We don't know who they are. We don't know what country they're from. And, and, and the agency has admitted that they've arrested people from 162 different countries. So right. you don't know who any of these people are. And when I brought it up to a lot of members of the media, they said, hey, can, can we see these gotaways? And I'm like, <laughs> no, they got away, you dumbass. That's the, that's the meaning <laughs> of the word. How, how am I going to show you gotaways? They got away. Uh, but that's these, the problem. These are the, people, these are the people who are reporting, writing yeah. articles on it. God. So they're concentrating on the on the people that they see in Texas, rightfully so. But I think that those people in Texas, they come across, they turn themselves in, they know they're going to get released. I think we're going to see a humongous problem uh, for many, many years to come from these gotaways because we realistically we don't know where they're at or who they right. are, and the number is not even a real number, Don. To be honest, it's it's a it's basically counting footprints in the sand and hope you got it right. Right, right, and then then they're flying them in the middle of the night, you know, up into different parts of the country, and they're you know unvaccinated, and, uh, not just for COVID, but for everything, you know, rubella, uh, smallpox, you know, everything. Yeah. You know, that's I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so we went through a time here where there was a lot of agents that that had a problem with wanting to take the vaccine, rightfully so, right, right. and. And, and this this administration said, if you don't get the vaccine, you're, you're going to potentially lose your job. You're going to get fired. All the while, they were allowing millions to come in yeah. from, from countries all, from all over the world. And they weren't even asking them for any type of vaccine record. And they right. were getting released. That's how ridiculous this administration has become. Oh, it, it's, it's a fucking circus act is what it is, you know. And, and we're stuck with it for another two years, you know. God. Yeah, we are. Uh, you hear a lot of people talk about the midterms. Oh, the midterms, the midterms. You know what, Don? I, I hate to say it, but the midterms ain't going to fix nothing. No. It's, it, it, I mean, at the end of the day, you have an, a person in power that can pass and veto anything he wants all day long. It might slow it down, uh, but I don't think it's going to it's gonna stop anything. And, and this country right now, I mean, just in the state alone, I see it often. They're so hungry for a hero that they don't pay attention to current politics. Most people don't pay attention to politics. They yeah. think they do off of what they see on YouTube or what they see on social media, but they don't look deep into the problem. Uh, and, and they're quick to crown people that uh, for the longest time, they've swung that you know, hammer of socialism and, and, and uh, you know, the, the radical left. And then one day they say, oh, well, I'm, I'm no longer a Democrat, or I don't, know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk about that anymore. And all of a sudden, it's like you say a few things that you read in a meme, and oh, look, here's our new hero. Yeah, uh, it's, just, it, it's crazy to me, man. You know, it's just insane. People are desperate for a hero. Where you at, Don? We're desperate for a hero. Hey, man, I'm laying on the beach, you know, up in the mountain, laying on the beach. I'm having fun. Uh, me, me and my bulldog. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and it's. It's just crazy. I see it all the time. And it's, 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 look, I came to this country legally. I wasn't born in America. And, you know, I was lucky enough to come here legally. Uh, I got citizenship through my Where father. Born? I was born in Mexico. Yeah. What part? Uh, Sonora, right, in, right, in, right on the border. Okay. And, and my dad would say, look, uh, and, and, and it probably, it, it isn't politically correct, but it's what my dad said, right? Yeah. And, and my dad said, if the country we left was as good as people think it is, we never would have left. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's that's. But when you say that, it people are so afraid to be pro-American. People are so afraid that they, they think, well, if I wave the red, white, and blue, if, if I'm that much American, people are going to think I'm an extremist or whatever. And it has nothing to do with that. I mean, 
I watch sports all the time, just like you do. And, and, I, and I like martial arts and the fighting and all that stuff. And you see it when you have a, a fighter from like Ireland or from Mexico uh, or from the Philippines. You, you see these people that go to these fights and they're flying the flag of their country. Right. Like they're very proud of it. And that's cool. Right. Well, you know what? Why is it not cool to wave the wife? If, if I wave the red, white, and blue, and I'm proud of it. Why do I got to get categorized as an extremist? That's yeah. horseshit. Right. Yeah. You're white imperialist, you know. Exactly. Calling, calling this. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, they're just trying to make us feel like shit. And you, every time you turn around, you know, in every direction. Yeah. It's very frustrating, though, man. It's frustrating. And I see it all the time. And I hear it from my standpoint where they say, well, you know, you're out here doing what you're doing and you're, and you're depriving people. Look, man, I, I took an oath to protect this yeah. country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Right. That's what it comes down to. And, and yeah, I was born in another country, but I owe everything I owe to this country. Uh, I fly one flag in my, in, in my home. I have an allegiance to one country. And, and I don't have a problem saying that this country is the best country in the world. Is it perfect? Yeah. No, but it's, it's the best country in the world. I don't see millions and millions of people trying to to leave America and go to China or Russia or, you know, right. Guatemala or El Salvador. Right. Yeah. You know, but they, they like the bits about us, but you know, get the fuck out, you know, open up, leave a spot for somebody else who wants to be here. And be who wants to be here. Yeah. 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 I mean, I get, I get, I get blamed. I mean, I'm one of those guys that if I'm watching a, a, a sport event and I see somebody waving the, and maybe this is too much, but it's how I am. If, if I'm watching a sporting event and I see somebody else that lives in the United States and they, they've grown up here and they owe everything here, and yeah, they may have a heritage from another country, and I see them flying a, the, the flag of another country against an American, it, yeah. it kind of pissed me off, man. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah, big time, big time. I mean, especially especially a sports you know star or a movie star or something you bastards are making millions of dollars you know and all you can do is just bad mouth the country that is making you rich you know go go to go to china you know go to russia see if you can uh, get treated that way as well over there and see if you can make as much money over there yeah i, I see it all the time you see it here in arizona you know when you have people with with flags from another country and, and I kind of poke fun at them sometimes and I'll say, Hey, like, I, I see you have like a, a Mexican flag or whatever. And they said, yeah. And, and I said, are you getting paid in dollars or pesos? Maybe you should get paid in pesos. You know, if you're yeah. that proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> how they respond. <laughs> uh, they kind of joke and they kind of laugh about it. They laugh it off and they say, Oh, well, you know how it is. No, nah, man, I don't know how it is. No. I'm, I'm right. from country. And this is where my allegiance stance is. Absolutely. You know, I just, the thing is, we, we don't teach history, you know, anymore in the schools. And if we do, we're not teaching the correct history. You know, I mean, they're, they're teaching us wokeism and bullshit, right? Uh, which is all fabricated. You know, it's just it, it's a fantasy that they're coming up with. Yeah, I don't think there's a there's a political problem in America. I think there's an educational problem in America. Right. And people aren't educated. And, and even when I see. You know, I, I get heavily involved when it comes to different candidates because my priority is obviously uh, as a representative of the board of council is making sure that the agents are taken care of, making sure that there's policies that are that will help our nation's borders and make the job easier. Right. And I, I don't get involved with the candidates when it comes to whatever um, social platform they have. Right. It's, it's strictly like law enforcement, border security and. I see it, especially in the primaries, and Arizona is notorious in the primaries, where they don't even educate themselves. They just look and see who's got the coolest pictures on Instagram, and they say, oh, I'm going to vote for that person because they got cool pictures, or they said a couple of cool words. Well, you know what? Dig into their history and dig in to where a lot of these people as candidates were just one election cycle ago, donating to the left, donating to people that didn't care about you know, the Second Amendment, didn't care about protecting our nation's borders. Uh, you know, I've seen it this whole week. They've, they've had a couple of politicians that all of a sudden said, oh, I'm no longer a Democrat. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's, oh, you're not? Here's your crown. Yeah. Never mind that you were voting against the Second Amendment, that you were like hanging out with Bernie Sanders and you thought socialism was the coolest thing. Oh, okay. And they don't even ask them. I've seen interviews where 
I saw an interview today where, you know, uh, uh, Tulsi Gabbard was being interviewed even, right? Yeah. And I respect her. She's cool because she did her, her uh, she served in the military. But yeah. are we going to forget that everything she voted for during yeah. her time in office was against the Second Amendment? Oh, yeah. Are we going to crown her because all of a sudden she's, she, 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 she walked away, so now we crown her in it. I mean, I don't know. I think people need to pay their dues a little bit. Yeah, yeah, prove themselves, yeah. You gotta prove yourself. Well, like that fucking idiot astronaut, man. The guy's a fucking carpetbagger, you know, Kelly. And, uh, you know, he does, he's not from Arizona. He, you know, he doesn't even live here now. When he's been serving for two years, you know. What the so fuck? The- go, go back to Texas. Leave us alone. <laughs> I got a funny story with that 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 uh, with Senator Kelly and and he's denied it and it's pretty much I mean it's whatever. Um, I ran into him several years ago at a Veterans Day parade, and I, I would talk to his wife because you know we we had a fantastic relationship with her when she was in Congress and she would help out issues with the agents. And she, I saw her and she wanted me to go shake his hand, and and I went to shake his hand, and, and when he realized who I was with with the Border Patrol Council, he kind of just looked at me and he's like, oh. Border Patrol, and he, and, he, and he did that, and and he just walked away. And it, I didn't honestly. This is how dumb I am, Don. I didn't think anything of it. Right. I was like, whatever, you know. You're not the first yeah. one that doesn't like me because of you know my profession. Uh, but a couple of weeks later, I was talking to a uh, to a news reporter about it, and and he's sitting there going, "That's big news. We gotta blow it up." And I was like. <laughs> Come with me to work one day, and you'll see how many people flip me off in the, in the, uh, the yeah. desk. You know, it wasn't a big deal to me. I grew up in Douglas, bro. Oh so yeah. I grew up in Douglas. Yeah, and I used to go hang out at the Fab Ab Rec Center up in Sierra Vista. Yeah. And so you, you know that whole crowd. We're, we're not that soft, you right. know. It's right. You can't offend me that easy. No. So I didn't think it's a big deal, but the reporter thought it was, and they blew it up. And then I think word got to him, and he just denied it. And I'm like, well, what are you gonna do? Admit it? Right. Yeah. I mean, well, the guy, guy's a liar all the way around, you know. So what? what what's one more lie? Is what's like, one more? Yeah. It's like Biden. He's just making shit up as he goes, you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, we have the best economy. No, we don't. You know? Do you know what's going on in this fucking planet? God. Sit there and say that the border is secure, and it's. Yeah. It's far from secure. And but it's I, I blame a lot of the news sometimes because so I do a lot of hits uh on, on different news networks, right? And a lot of them you'll have your talking points and you'll have 30, 30, 30 seconds, maybe a minute to do just focus on that, but you can't expand on a lot of things. And and I and I blame them sometimes because for the longest time I was getting a lot of interviews and people were asking me. Is it chaos? Can we use the word chaos? Dude, I don't care what word you use. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they were so they were so focused on, oh, can we say chaos? Oh, can we say invasion? Look, man, you got millions of people coming across the border and they're getting released in the United States. You got a bunch of unaccompanied juveniles that are coming across, they're getting released in the United States, and we don't know if they're really juveniles. Right. Because you know, some of them look older than you and me, but right. they're walking around saying they're 16 years old. And when it comes to accountability, during the Obama administration, we had that big push of the unaccompanied juveniles that were coming in through Southern Arizona. All those kids, or unaccompanied juveniles as they called them, they're all grown adults. And if you ask anyone in this administration where those people are, they don't have an answer because they don't know. And the same thing is gonna happen with these millions that are coming across today. They're not gonna go, they're not gonna know where they're at a couple of years from now. Oh, they don't care, you know. I, it, to me, it's my opinion that uh, you know Biden, Biden, and the Democrats are trying, trying, you know, purposely to destroy this country. You know. Well, uh, if they're not doing it on purpose, they're sure, they're sure doing a good job by doing it on accident. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because I mean they're, they're they're doing everything you would do, you know, step by step to destroy a country. No, and you've seen it where you, I mean, you've lived here your whole life yourself pretty much, Don. I mean, you've seen it. You've seen the problem. You've seen it in Arizona. You definitely see it in Cochise County. You can't come out on Cochise County and drive around certain areas anymore because there's going to be all these car chases. We've seen so many individuals, uh, American citizens so far, that have been killed down there in Cochise County because of the failure to yields and 
you know, the sheriff going after him and Border Patrol getting involved. Uh, when was it? Just two days ago. Just two days ago, coming out of Cochise County, there was a vehicle that was spiked. It, it rolled. And there was, I believe, seven bodies that had to be taken to uh, airlifted to the hospital because the individual driving refused to stop the vehicle. Yeah. And probably a, a minor, an Arizona minor, too, making his $2,500 or something like that, right? That's exactly what's happening. So, so what they'll do is they'll focus on keywords through like TikTok or Instagram and Facebook, the hashtags, they, they look at the hashtags and they see that a lot of these people are enamored by the, 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 the Mexican narco culture. And then they'll send the messages. A lot of them, we're seeing a lot of kids out of the Phoenix area, 16 year old kids, and they'll drive down here to Cochise County or they'll drive down here into the, uh, the sales area on the Tohono Autumn Reservation. They'll pick up a load of, of, of people and they'll take them back up north for, yeah, pretty much close to about 2000 bucks. And, and then they, they, this is what's even worse is that they'll run away from them. And then when they get detained, the prosecutor doesn't even want to prosecute because there's too many of them and they're minors. Really? So, I mean, if you're not going to get any consequences for yeah. your actions, well, then why why not do it? it's yeah. like this. Okay. You're, 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 you're a fighter, Right. And you're a champion. And if someone says, hey, you can go fight Dan, you can go fight Don Fry, and he's not going to hit you back <laughs> at all. <laughs> and if you win, you're the new champion. Well, you might as well take a shot at the title. Right, I mean, right. There's no consequences. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's basically how it is right now, guys. They'll come down here. They'll get try to do what they do. They get caught, no consequences. Same with the with the individuals that are coming in illegally. They get caught. You'll yeah. chase them. You'll chase them for miles. And then when you catch them, they turn around and say, I'm here looking for asylum. I fear persecution in my country. And then you process them and you release them. That's all you can do. Yeah. No consequences under this administration. Yeah, that's bullshit. You know, that's 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 ridiculous. Yeah, you know, they're going to get a bunch of guys killed. You know, they really are. A bunch of our servicemen and women and, and border patrolmen and women, you know, and then the civilians, too. All the civilians, putting them in danger completely. Yeah, and then you look at the fentanyl. I mean, the, the, we're being yeah. overrun by, by drugs right now. In, in That's the, the fucking Chinese. That's the Chinese. And I think the Bidens, too, you know, I mean, fucking Bidens are owned by the Chinese, you know. Shit. So what they'll do is they're sending the raw material to Mexico and then they'll, they'll produce it in Mexico. Once the raw material is there, then they'll fabricate it, they'll bring it across. And it's coming. It, it, it looks like the sweet tarts now, you know, the old yeah. candy, the candy sweet tart. That's how they're disguising it. And there's even been a couple of uh, reports that they're bringing it across. And it looks like the chalk, the chalk that the kids use to draw on the, on the ground. I mean, right. they just any way they can bring it across. Well, I remember when I first started doing this job, we'd get excited when we'd have big loads of marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> now it's it's meth, it's cocaine, it's fentanyl, it's heroin. Uh, yeah, the her heroin's coming back. You know? It's really? just it's sick. Uh, it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And, and, and we're all sitting around with our thumbs up our asses, you know, letting it happen, you know? Uh, the fucking government's laughing at us. Yeah, you know, the 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 more they get away with, the the stronger, and braver they get. You know, the and and the uh, less they respect us, and they just piss on us. You know, Dude, man, how, I, I think about it. All the time. F, look, at, look at how the FBI is. You know? <laughs> Don't get me started. Yeah. Uh, but, but I see it. I see it often. And and when you have the leadership themselves saying there's not a problem. I mean, it's just right. a slap in the face. I, yeah. I talk to agents, obviously, all the time, and you get the same story as, hey, we're out here chasing people. Uh, they're fighting us. They want to fight. Uh, they're putting other people in, uh, in danger. And then when we apprehend them, we just we just release them. Yeah. And, and this administration doesn't care. And then you have agents doing their job, and if they so much as, as drop an F-bomb, against the people they're trying to arrest all of a sudden it's it opens up this big investigation and now the agents are under investigation for months and months sometimes over a year 
because abusive it, language <laughs> for abusive language. I've seen it. It's yeah. crazy. It's, I mean, it's insane. You have a guy that's running from you and he's throwing rocks at you. And yeah. when you apprehend him, he's punching and elbowing you and, and trying to bite you. Yeah. And if you say the F word, you're the one under investigation. Right. I mean, how can you do your job? You can't, and that's that's what they're counting on. Hey, man, it's it's always good seeing you, Don. I'll tell you what, and and I've seen you throughout the years. Um, it's it's just always it's it's always a pleasure to see you, man. I'll be honest, and, and I was pretty stoked you were on my show. Yeah, um, that was fun. That was fun. Thank you very much. I was a blast having you there, uh, but it was it's it was weird because so I know how you are at times, and and you have this persona, but. But you still get you still get kind of nervous and and, and 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 you're a little humble about it a little bit still sometimes. Uh, about what? When people say that they're a fan of yours oh. and they, you know, they they grew up watching you and all that and 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 I'll tell you what people always ask me, hey, you know, you you, you had Don Fry on your show and how is? I said I ran I've run into him so many times and you know uh, seeing you when I grew up obviously and being from Cochise County and you know you were a firefighter and I got into I was a firefighter before I did yeah. wildland firefighting yeah and uh it was just you you have that I don't know it's just you, there's something about you brother you have that glow still you still you, you just you still got it yeah thanks man I, I, yeah we talked about you being a wild man firefighter when I was on your show how long I, I can't remember so how long were you a, a wild man not not long man I did it for about a year and a half maybe yeah then uh, and then I moved out of, of Cochise County. I came up to uh, to Tucson, Arizona, and I started working out here. And I got a job at the. For, I started working for the state prison, and then after that, I transferred over and I went to the academy and, and went to Border Patrol. And th I was, you know, I've been one of those 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 loud mouths, I guess, for a long time. It, it's funny because my classmates will tell you, and, and one of my classmates is now uh, the the guy in charge of the station that I work at. Yeah, and. And some people think, well, as I as I got involved in the union, that all of a sudden, you know, I started being more vocal, and that's one hundred percent not true. I've been vocal. Right. And always had a mouth. Back had from mouth from me, but <laughs> I think it's my upbringing and where I grew up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I think the biggest thing is bullies, bro. I've always had a problem with bullies, and I think unfortunately you have people that. Or get into law enforcement and they'll move up in the ranks. Right. And now they they think they got some position of power. I, I like to say they, they they got a they they uh they got a new pair of tennis shoes, so they think they're running stuff now, right? <laughs> and, and you see it all the time. And I like and I call them out. I call them out all day long because you, you know you have you have young agents that'll come in and they're impressionable and they want to do the right thing and you know this is the job they've been wanting to do. And then you have the older guys, and and ribbing is okay, right? I'm not right, like, right. you know, what I mean, you gotta you gotta rib the guys a little you bit. Gotta have some fun, you, you, or else you go insane, you know. You exactly. go insane. Don't be malicious about it, but it's fun. And uh, and 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 I remember when I first joined, there was a couple of guys that were like they would try to punk you a little bit. Um, I remember one particular individual. We were out on patrol, and uh, he had said a story of a of another young agent that fell asleep and when you first joined they have you two two people right your journeyman right, and yourself right. and one of the guys said you know so and so fell asleep so his journeyman got upset pulled over to the side of the road kicked him out of the car and said find someone else to ride with because you're not going to fall asleep with me oh, gee. Right? so i heard that and i said you know that's a little bit much i said you know i mean i wouldn't put up with that crap right, right. and the guy looked at me and he says I, i'll do that to you right now and, and I kind of laughed and I said, no, you won't. I will take those keys away from you. And you're the one that's going to be stuck in the <laughs> desert. Like, you, you're picking on the wrong guy, right? Yeah. I looked at him and I was serious. And he was serious too. And then he kind of laughed and he said, I was just joking. And I looked at him and said, no, you weren't. You were trying to punk me. But then you realized right. you can't punk me. And, and a lot of those individuals, they get promoted. And then they try to punk the young agents. And, and that's a lot of the reason why. I started becoming more active union wise is because I was seeing a lot of that. I was seeing that some of these guys that are in management positions would take it too far. And, and that's why sometimes I still get upset when, when I, 
we're on the news and we're talking about the issues that are that's happening on our borders and then they'll have some retired boss or retired chief right that all of a sudden he wants to speak and i'm thinking dude like where were you when when you were talking you could have made a difference right right now you're talking but where were you when when you could have made a real difference they're trying to sell that book it's bingo so once they've secured their retirement and they secured their second job and they did whatever they want now they now they're coming out and saying oh now i want to help right now I'm the, bro I, I needed your help when you were making policy i don't need you to talk now when you're trying to sell your book yeah, and, and all those little things man especially now where everyone is so uh thirsty to get the border immigration it, uh, uh, issues out there you see it with these retired guys. You see it with you know candidates, politicians, and everyone. All of a sudden, it's it's the it's the it's the hot topic. Well, hell, it's a hell of a topic. You know, I remember, um, fuck, back in 1996, I was fighting in the UFC. I was getting ready to go to a UFC nine, and I was at the airport, Tucson airport, and the the front page of the the Tucson paper said illegal crossing up 185 percent. You know, that was back in 1996, you know, and you know, that's when McCain was compared to those numbers of now, yeah, yeah, and we've had over two million, well over two million under this administration, we've we've had over a million gotaways under this administration that's reported. Right, and we don't know how many of those are fucking Muslim terrorists, you know? Well, we don't even know the real number. Uh, right. I've said it. Like, so, the, so the way they count gotaways is is literally footprints in the sand. Yeah. That's how archaic the system is. It's just, yeah, it's just guessing, yeah. Yeah, I, I was talking to a couple of, uh, of people that are running for office, and they said, well, what we'll need to do is we'll need to put more uh, cameras and sensors and so, so for for what? So you can yeah. tell me more in your way? Right. I, I need policy changes. What we need is policy changes. We need to bring back remain in Mexico. That's the number one important thing. Yeah. Number two, you need to get some of these immigration judges and these asylum officers. Instead of hiring 87,000 IRS guys. Right. You know, all they gotta hire is a thousand more, if that, immigration and asylum officers, have them work at the border, detain the individuals that are coming across. And when you detain them, you fast track their asylum claim. That that alone is going to drop it. There was a candidate and that he's a congressman out of Texas. His name is Henry Cuellar. He's a Democrat out of Texas. And he said that of the individuals that are coming into the United States currently illegally, that are claiming asylum, less than 7% are actual asylum claims. Right, right. So if you know that number... Why aren't they doing something about it? Absolutely. Because, you know, the thing is, instead of having these 87,000 IRS guys, like you said just 1,000, and, and that would equal the 87,000, the money the, the new age, age, IRS agents would collect, you know, because it'd save us yeah. that kind of money. No, definitely. And that's why that's why I tell people, people got to do your homework, man. Uh, you know, especially around election season. You get people that are going to, I'm going to, I promise I'm going to do this. I promise I'm going to do this. How are you going to do it? Yeah. You know, it's even more difficult, I think, for individuals that are running for state positions because there is that division of the federal government. So there's only so much that, that some of these people can do. There's only so much that a governor can do. And, and I think it's, it's very dangerous to promise that you can do something when realistically you have to look at the federal government and what what laws they have Mm -hmm. and and part of the problem and 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 i think you know i hear it all the time well i'm going to vote for this person because they're the better of the two evils well yeah that's i think that's the right thing to do but how did we get to those positions where you have to vote for the lesser of the two and it's just it's frustrating so frustrating yeah, the 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 less smelly piece of shit, pile of shit. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And 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 in our position within the council is candidates come to us. 
So when we first endorsed President Trump, and it was the first uh, person that we had ever endorsed for president in a primary, right? Yeah. Was President. He came out to Arizona and he was a good out. choice. <laughs> hey, we did pretty Denver. good. Uh, he came out and he reached out to us. So you had, I believe you had Hillary Clinton here at the time. Um, I think Bernie Sanders was here at the same time. And they all asked the agency leadership here in Tucson, hey, can you show us around? President Trump called our union office and said, I want you guys, the boots on the ground, to tell me what the heck is going on. Right. That's a big deal. So it's funny because, you know, we endorsed, after that, we started endorsing in the primaries, which I, I, I sometimes cringe. I think we shouldn't endorse some people in the primaries because the generals come around and people get upset. And they're like, well, you didn't endorse me in the primaries, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. look, water under the bridge. Let's move, let's right. move forward. Let's try to take care of our country. Let's take care of different things in the state. Uh, but some people, I mean, they, they're, they still get upset over it. It is what it is. But um, we need to move forward from that if we really want to fix things and if we really want to care. And then we can't have the attitude. Like, So if I'm a candidate, I got to come to you and say, hey, hey, Don, like this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to offer. Can you endorse me? Do you like my views? Ask me questions. But... I'm the one applying for the job if I'm the candidate. Right, right. You didn't have to come to me and say, hey, man, you want my endorsement? Like, yeah. it doesn't work that way. But right. we have some people that, that just, they'll sit there and they'll say, well, you know, if they if somebody wants to endorse me, they can come to me. Well, I'm not applying for the job. Yeah. It's it's not me. Right, right. I'm not, looking, I, for, for, I'm not looking for your approval. You're looking for mine. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, and some people just don't figure it out. But I think, I mean, I think we're at the point right now where, you know, the candidates that are, that, that we have that are not from the left radical positioning, those are the candidates that we got to make sure to get in there because, you know, I don't fear just for my safety, but I fear for the future of many, uh, the safety of many generations to come. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you've got uh, up north there, what, in Pinal County, you know, you got those big signs that say, careful, this is a drug, drug traffic zone, you know, uh, enter at your own risk. You know, what the fuck is that all about, you know? This yeah, is the United States of America. They should be worried about us. That's exactly it. Why, why are we worried? And you, you know what? I remember during the last uh, election cycle, we would talk about it and I would talk with some of the individuals that are, were the candidates or the people that assist the campaigns. And one of the things they were, they were concentrating on, they'll concentrate on the Latino vote or the law enforcement. And I said, look, one of the things that, that people need to concentrate on is you got to knock on them doors of, of the, of the housewives, mm -hmm. the housewives. you got to talk to these housewives and say, look, you're a soccer mom and you're taking little Billy to soccer practice. Well, there's there's a predator right around the corner that wants to sell him drugs. Right. Because that's actually what's happening. Deadly get drugs. These kids, they get injured and you know they get hooked on painkillers. And next thing you know, you got, you know, these guys, these sweet thugs selling them heroin and selling them, you know, pills and everything else. And 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 that all is a domino effect because of the issues that we have on our nation's borders. And people don't get it. They think it's, oh, well, you just want to stop uh the dishwasher from washing, you know, dishes out of Denny's. You hear that all the time. And I hear it from them. It's me being Hispanic when I hear that. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, man. What does that mean? You think they're all coming here to wash dishes? Yeah. Like, I'm Hispanic. I ain't washing. I don't even wash dishes at home. Yeah. <laughs> Neither did I. That's one of the reasons I'm divorced. <laughs> well, hopefully my wife doesn't see this episode. Yeah, yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> but it is. I mean, it's difficult times, man. You know, I mean, to come to to be honest, and you you know, you mentioned you know you got these people that are carpet baggers. Yeah. Well, like I grew up here, so I grew yeah, up on too. the border. Me I too. was yeah. born on the border. I was raised on the border. I lived on the border. I continue to work here. I continue to, to to call Arizona my state, and and I don't want our state to go to to go go to crap, man. To be honest, I got right. I got kids here, you know. I got I got an older son that, that that's uh, down there in Cochise County. I got four grandkids in Cochise County. You know, I got my young daughter here in in in, in Arizona in, in in Tucson. 
I, I mean, I, I want what's best for all of them and their generation. And, and people just don't get it. When you look at people like the Biden administration and those guys, you know, they've built their money probably and, you know, they're, they're, they're done, but they, they're just so greedy that they want to do more and, yeah, and no, at no. what price, what price at the price of this country. And it's just horrific, man. Well, the lives, the lives lost too, you know, and then, um, geez, I mean, uh, speaking of the Biden, what do you think about Kamala Harris? <laughs> so, so I got in, in a little bit of trouble and I'll probably get in trouble again when I say it here, but yeah. you know, she, the borders are. Right. She went down. She went down to El Paso once. She 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 ate a taco, drank a Corona, and all of a sudden she thinks she knows about the border. Right. She, right. Hasn't, been, she hasn't been back since. <laughs> so and and that's that's a great point because when you start thinking about it, you hear people say, "Well, we got to impeach Biden." Really? Yeah. And, and then and what? Want to have two percent? Mm -hmm. I call her two percent because <laughs> when when she dropped out of the race when she was running for for office. Yeah. She only had 2% of the votes. <laughs> I guess everything is possible in this country. You go from having 2%, you know, approval rating to all of a sudden the vice president. Of the, the vice States. president, yeah, absolutely. Jeez. That's, a, that's scary. She's dumb as a fucking box of hammers, you know? Jeez. Well, it's, a, it's issues with the whole group. I mean, I spent a lot of time out there in, in D.C. and I see it. Uh, but it comes back to the same thing. You have a lot of people that are not educated. All right. I, I, I dealt with it within the Hispanic community, even with my own family at times, right? When uh, when President Trump said the, the famous speech where he, he, he said, and we break it down. He said, the majority, so the majority doesn't mean everyone. Right. It means, right. It means a pretty big number, though. Big chunk right? of them. Right, right. The majority of the individuals that enter the country illegally. So now he's saying the majority that enter illegally mm -hmm. are criminals, rapists, drug dealers. All right. But the media twisted that around and said, look, Trump's saying that Mexicans are drug dealers. And that's not what he said, man. He said the majority that enter illegally. So if you're entering legally, you're already not part of that equation. Right, right. You've been if you're searched. Yeah. A fourth of entry, you're already not part of that equation. And but people were they were quick to, you know, try to throw that jab at them and and it's well, it's sad. Don't, it's, don't they don't listen? You know, they don't listen, they don't, listen, they don't process it. They don't do their homework, they don't pay attention to what's actually going on. Right. You, you know, see it here during the during this whole time during the pandemic. There was issues at our at our ports with you know they shut them down, so they weren't allowing any traffic to come across. But this country was still getting flooded with drugs, right? Because the majority of the drugs are definitely coming in between the ports of entries. You know, we spoke at the beginning of the show where they'll flood one area, they'll distract the agents, and then they'll take advantage to bring drugs across. Well, just a couple of weeks ago, and, and people, you can find it. Google it, you'll find it. The port director of the Nogales port of entry said that it's not true that the drugs are coming in between the ports. He said that the majority of the drugs are coming through the actual port of entry. Now, now let's, let's process this. The guy in charge of the port, the right, port right. is telling you it's coming here where I'm working. Yeah. Well, then, dude, you need to either retire or have a plan yeah. here, find someone else to do the job. Yeah, they need to get rid of him because you're not doing it proper. Yeah. Right. And, and that's how crazy it is. But instead of seeing it that way, what happened was a lot of the liberal news there they applauded him and said, "Look at this great guy. He's he's saying that you know it's through the ports, not border patrol guys." They, wow. Instead of saying, "Hey, dude, so if it's coming through there, what what, what exactly is your job?" What is it you're doing? Right, right. Uh, why that's how crazy you, why aren't you stopping it? You know, if you know it's there, why aren't you stopping it? That's Safe how crazy it's become, man. Yeah. It's insane. You know, and people aren't taking they're not they're not taking responsibility. And 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 as I've said, you've seen a lot of us from the council on the news, and we don't say give give the agents more pay, give give uh more technology up in the air, uh, you know, this is what we say, change the policy, change the policy, 
put immigration judges, asylum officers there at the port or at the holding facilities. And when they come in to ask for asylum, fast track the cases. Now, don't get me wrong, because I know a lot of agents listen to your show. Uh, uh, if you they guys better. Listen, they better, damn it. Hey, Rays, we're okay with that, too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pay raise never hurt. <laughs> yeah, that never hurt anyone. Well, shit, how come they don't uh, take the money that you all confiscate and divvy it up, you know, uh, put it back into the, the till there, you know? Because, you know, they just throw a party at the end. Yeah. At the end of the month. Yeah, they, 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 all that millions of dollars that they're collecting, they should throw in, throw into your all salaries, you know? I mean, what else? They, the Hunter Biden smoking it, you know? Shit. You know what's funny, though, because if you start looking at it, so there is bonuses at the end of the year, but for whatever reason, the thousand dollars and th thousands of dollars that are bonus money, you always see them go to the higher ups. Yeah, yeah, it always works that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got agents out there, you know, busting their ass each and every day in the hot sun. There, you know, it's and it's and it's rough, and they're chasing drug dealers and drug mules, and you know, getting in arguments and getting in fights and, and you know, driving uh, in, in bad areas. But you see the guys behind the desk getting all the glory. They're getting the money, yeah. They're getting getting the promotions and the awards, yeah, and the salaries. Yeah. I'll tell you what, uh I'd like to I'd like to get a job with the uh state fishing game, man. I'd like to be a game warden. You know anybody there? That'd be a good that'd be that's a good gig. Yeah, yeah. Like to... deep, though, man. Some of them game fishing warden. Man, as soon as you grab the fishing pole, they run over there making sure you got, hey, hey I was just yeah. moving it for my friend. <laughs> that pole. <laughs> see your license. Yeah, see, that's the kind of job for me. That, that'd that be good. That'd yeah. be good. I thought you were still doing horse. You're not doing horseshoeing. No, I'm not doing anything, man. Jeez, I, I just got out of the sick bed again, you know? Right. Yeah. So. But I didn't need a bunch of marshmallows. Yeah, <laughs> you had me concerned. You had me concerned, <laughs> and then you brought, and I was like, "Oh wow, I didn't even know he 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 was injured and it was an accident." And then you turned it around on me. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, well, you're you're an easy target, man. You're <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's it's. I'm glad you guys are doing what you're doing because not enough people are doing it, and you know just. How did you guys come up with the name toxic masculinity? You know, that's my brain, my brain child. You know, shit. I just I got, got tired of all this toxic masculinity from the left. I was like, well, fuck. You know, they named it. You know, they come up with a good, a good title. Let's use it. You know, so I stole it from the left. No, and you've been doing it. You're, I mean, you're you're the you're the right person to carry that flag forward and <laughs> and, and actually make people wake up for reals and see what, what's going on because you've been doing it for quite some time, you yeah, know, nice. yeah. and you got a great, you got a big voice and people know who you are and, and that's right. what it comes down to. And I think that's part of the problem when, so I do a lot of the social media stuff and I just did a, um, an event in Phoenix, no, in California with turning point USA. I spoke up there and, and the one, that's one of the things I tell these people, you know, you guys are so enamored with posting on Instagram and getting followers. Well, yeah. it, it's about the message, man. You got to spread the message. And there's too many people that once you get into a certain category, especially on social media, there's a lot of jealousy that goes on right. and they, they want the attention. They don't want you to have more followers or them to have. So it just goes back and forth and it's just great. Maybe, I don't know. It's insane. Uh, maybe I'll do a bikini shoot with a couple of guns and that'll give me some more followers. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Uh, That's don't know the what, don't know what kind of followers you get, but yeah. <laughs> hot, hot pants and guns seems to be paying off for a lot of people to get followers on their best. <laughs> I'll sit that one out. I don't need any more followers. <laughs> but yeah, it's rough. What's your favorite kind of weapon? So... I'm a Glock guy. I really like Glocks, right? Yeah, nine millimeter. Uh, yeah, I'm a fan of Glocks. I collect a bunch of different guns, so I have I have revolvers and I have nine to elevens. Uh, but you know, right now Glocks, the Glocks, my thing. I, I really enjoy it, and I think it's because you can buy it uh, at a very decent price. Yeah, and it's a weapon, and it just it shoots forever. 
and you don't have to worry about it. I mean, you just got to get rid of the sights. They come with those nasty plastic sights. Yeah. Get rid of those and throw some good sights on it. Uh, but most of my friends are big Sig Sour fans. I like so it. All, Sigs are cool. But they're always giving me heck and say, oh, you're, you're, but I'm an AK fan too. I, I, I like AK 47s more, more than I like AR 15s. Yeah. I just, it's just, I think it's a simpler weapon where uh, if, if, you know, shit hits the fan, you, you yeah. don't want to have to worry about, hey, did I oil it? This and this. And, and realistically, AR 15s are great. I mean, don't, I don't knock them. Uh, I just think, you know, it's just, I prefer the AK. Yeah, it's, ARs are kind of sensitive, you know. <laughs> or the, the AR, the AR you, uh, or AK, you can bury in mud, pull it out and shoot. Right. Oh. And then a revolver, you know, I keep a revolver uh, near me at all times uh, because it's just simple. I have I have a, a, a what do you call it, a eight-round revolver. Yeah. So when the bad guy counts six bullets, I still got two more for him. Yeah. <laughs> is it a twenty-two Magnum or what is it? It's a 357 Magnum. Wow. Well, eight rounds, huh? Son eight rounds. Son of a... What, what, a what, attention getter. what caliber is your Glock? My Glock, so, so I have nine millimeters. I got 40 caliber. I got, um, and I got a 45. And, and amazingly enough, that 45 in Glock, I got it uh, off of a friend. He didn't want it. I got a real good deal on it. And uh, I didn't know how it was going to shoot because obviously it's it's... You know the polymer frame, and I'm used to sh shooting the 45 on a 9 to 11, but it's it's too, right now it's a Glock 30 is what it's, it's the is the uh, the model, and yeah. it's the most accurate Glock I have, and, and it's in 45. Wow! And it just shoots great. It's great. I'm in the I'm in the market for a, uh, a single action 357. I got one. I got one. I want one of them old cowboy guns. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. I had, I had a forty-five uh, single action army. Um, those Uber. are see, those are good. Yeah, or, or Uberti. Yeah, and uh, he apparently it grew legs and walked away. So I gotta. Yeah, I'm not happy about that one. Yeah, you gotta get another one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it takes the money. They're expensive. <laughs> They're so expensive nowadays, and it's crazy because you know there's a lot of gun shows, and people are always saying, "Oh, I'm gonna go to the gun show." Man, I've been to gun shows, and I'm going to tell you, if, if you're looking for little gadgets for your gun, yeah, that's the place to go. Right. But the guns are not cheap at gun shows anymore. No, no, they can... so they're more expensive. Yeah, yeah, they know they they know uh, how desperate people are, and you know you see it in your face how bad you want it. You know. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple AKs that I purchased recently, and and, and I think they, they were under they were under seven hundred bucks, and really? uh, I went to gun show to get. Um, to just look around. I go down there and look around and there was guys selling them the same ones that I had just got a week ago for uh 1200 bucks. Jeez. And I'm thinking, man, that's should have brought, should have come. I should have yeah, sold yeah. a couple <laughs> should, should, should have bought 10 of them. Yeah. I brought them and sold them. Shit. Right. So, I mean, it's just, and, 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 you know, and I think it's all the, all the, uh, the people that are hearing the news of the attack on the second amendment and everything like that. And look, it, it's, it was, it's so important that you should defend yourself that our forefathers decided to make that the number second, the number two most important thing on there. Right. There's number five. It's not the number 28. It's the number two, uh, yeah. you know, the right to bear arms. Yeah. It shall not be infringed. And uh, you know, you look up the word infringed, in the law dictionary, it's trespassed. Should not be trespassed on that. Nah. So that means in any way, shape, or form, you know. So all these uh, about, city, you know. That's what's crazy is that people always say, oh, well, hunting and this. Both sides. So one side says, what do you need an AR-15 to hunt for? I don't. Yeah. I didn't buy the AR-15 to hunt. I bought the AR-15 to protect myself and my family. Right. That's why I bought it. Right? And then, and, then you'll, and then you'll have the other side say, well, you know, it's a modern weapon now and no one hunts with muskets. Stop saying it's, it's a modern weapon and no one hunts with muskets and say the Second Amendment's not about hunting. Right. That's, I mean, at the end of the day. And, and and if you look at the First Amendment, right, freedom of speech, uh, you know, we didn't have podcasts back then. Right. We didn't have radio. We didn't right. have Zoom. We didn't have any of that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, ink, ink and paper with a, a turkey quill, you know? Right. So... 
Is the First Amendment about you just having to write everything on, a, on an ink and paper to send it out? No, that's not what it's about, obviously. Right. And, and that's why I think it's just so ridiculous when people say, do you need an AR-15 to hunt? I don't need an AR-15 to hunt. That's not why I bought my AR-15. Because they're grasping the straws because they know they have no fucking legitimate argument. And so they're just throwing shit against the ball, see what sticks. And unfortunately, a lot's been sticking. And we live so close to Mexico, Don. I mean, look at yeah. look at the violence with weapons over there. Yeah. Guns are illegal in Mexico. Right. Maybe they should put some more no weapon sounds signs allowed over there. Maybe yeah. that'll make that yeah, that'll cure it. They they just haven't heard. They don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't put it in several different languages. <laughs> yeah, the the, the gun free zone. That's the dumbest bunch of shit, man. It is, man. It doesn't make any sense. And I, I welcome people, you know, I, I see people that, that, uh, you know, they have their guns and, and I think, Hey, you know, that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, but I think people need to train, obviously oh, absolutely. People need to, they, they need to be able to train. They need to see the safety of it and they need to study the law when they can use it and when they don't use it. Um, so that's actually very important. Cause that, I, that, I, changes, I, that changes there all, all the time too. You know, right. it depends on the that's judge, gotta, depends on the well, judge you have. I'm trying to put a little side uh, a business going on that, and that's what I'm going to dedicate it to, just help people up out a little bit more and, and, and show them, you know, the rights and the wrongs of, of, of carrying a weapon and how to carry it in the different areas where you can shoot and you can't. Right. You know, and I don't know if people know that. And I see it at, at, at gun shops. I see it at gun shows. You have you have the, the, the young girl that goes to these shows with her boyfriend and her husband, right? right? And the husband picks the gun out that she should shoot. Well... That's that's the dumbest thing. And, and and one of the things you always hear is, well, she's got to start off with a revolver. Look, these women, they can drive their car with their knee. Yeah, while they're can, on makeup. You know, makeup on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> they know how to wreck around. On a, on a so trust me. <laughs> They'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've seen them. I've seen them uh, going down the road, yakking away, you know, putting a makeup, eating on the phone. It's like, God damn, how many hours? And you're worried she's not going to wreck that, that semi auto. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she'll, out real quick. <laughs> she'll scream loud enough, you know, to, to get it to move right by itself. It'll do it on its own. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long you been with the Border Patrol? I've been there 19 years. Wow. wow. A long time. So I did 19 years there. I did uh, just a little over five years uh, with the state. And then obviously I did um, I uh, with the fire department down in in, in Douglas, uh, for a Sunnyside Fire Department, yeah. uh, which is called Land. And then uh, I was playing music. And I played in a rock band. Oh, yeah? Wanted... What did you play? It didn't work out so well. I was the singer. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I had a band down there. Would well, you know that you're from you're from Sierra Vista down there? So we did some shows down at the at the Fry, uh, uh, what do you call it, at the Fab Ab Rec Center? Yeah, and we we played back then. Back man, it was a long time ago, man. There was some good there was some good bands back then. Yeah, out there. Damn. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, <clears throat> but it was just you know you you I got I got tired of eating eating uh, ramen noodle soup for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh yeah, I bet, I bet, yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's just it's that's that's why I mean some sometimes some of the things I see is you know like I said I've lived on the border my whole life, Don. Like yeah. I see it, I know what's been happening. I know I know how it works, and and it's just it's frustrating because I don't think enough people get it. They don't right. understand it, and and a lot of it is because of the irresponsible media out there that, like I said, they want to focus on what words to use to call the situation instead of the actual situation right and who cares what you call it let's figure out how to fix it and right. and and the fix is there we've said it many times hire the judges send them down there remain in mexico those three things will drop the illegal flow into the united states and when when that comes down the drugs that are coming in stop or, or get slowed down tremendously and the crime in this country gets gets stopped and and then you know the ODs and the people that are dying and all that, all that would stop. And all you got to do is those three things. Yeah. Why well, would you do it? You know, I think it's on Biden's head that you know these 
people are dying. You know, the kids are dying. And, you know, he, he's not doing his job as president. He's not securing the border, not securing the nation. You know, they're invading, they're coming in, and they're killing us. And, uh, you know, I think it's a goddamn Chinese, you know, I mean, all the all the ingredients for the drugs go from China to Mexico. They cook it in Mexico, and then they run it across, you know? That's correct. That's correct. And, look, this is just you and me here talking, and we, and we realize that's the problem. Yeah. How is it you have, like, the FBI and the Intel reports and everyone else not saying, hey, this is where the problem is and this is how you got to fix it. Right. I mean, are they scared to speak up? Are they scared to say anything? You know, it's it's like the port of entry, the port of entry director saying it's coming through here. Well, if you know it is, why aren't you doing something about it? Yeah, yeah. Why are you bragging about it? You know, shit. I'd be, yeah. ashamed. I'd be ashamed if, you know, my job to stop it and that's the way it was coming. That's the problem. Like, these guys aren't ashamed. No one's ashamed anymore. There's, there's no integrity. There's, there's, like I said, there's, it's not a problem with, with uh, the politicians. It's a problem with the education of people and people aren't educated into what the issues are. And they do need, everyone is about a knee jerk reaction. It's about knee jerk reaction. And it's about covering the well after the child has already fallen in the water. And, right. that's, and you can't do that. You gotta, you gotta cover up that well and take care of it before there's, a, before the accident occurs. Right. And no one's being held responsible for it right now. No, no they just won't label people. You know, <laughs> they want to label you a racist or, you know, misogynist or what have you. And, you know, piss on you, you know, you, you come up with a valid argument, you know, and then, then we can argue, you know. But Yeah, I, I did a, I did an interview um, on a radio show and it was after some Border Patrol agents had gone to speak at the University of Arizona. And these, these group of, of girls, they started heckling them. And then they followed him all the way to the, through the hallways and they kept on heckling him and cussing them out. And the agents, they get to the parking lot, they get in the vehicles and then they start cussing them out in Spanish. And, and I made comments about that, that a lot of these people, they, they do that and they know they can get away with it because you have uniform personnel. But I don't think any of those people would do it to a regular civilian. No. You know, they, they probably get turned around and get punched. Right. Get punched and I said that. And after I said that, you know, the university held this big vigil and protest saying that I was wanting to punch college. You're threatening, you were threatening them. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what the heck are you talking about? You know, I, I just, you guys are the ones that were wrong. You, you flipped it around. And after that, I got invited to speak uh, there at the University of Arizona by, by the, uh, the Young Republican Club. And I went over there and there was, uh, they had about 80 protesters. Yeah. Because I was there. Uh, but the lady that, and I forget her name, I, I, she looks just like Corella DeVille. Yeah. And, and she's one of the protests. I don't remember her name, but she looks just like Corella DeVille. And, uh, and she said that because she believed I was violent, she was going to do a silent protest. <laughs> so I walked through there, and they were standing there with signs. It, looked, it almost looked like I was walking through a Mayan convention. Yeah. And, and they had these signs, and, you know, they said, um, race trader and you know sell out and all this because I'm Hispanic and I walked through there and I remember looking at some of the protesters and I said Matt this is the quietest you two have been probably in, in quite some time in your and whole life <laughs> and, and, and so I'm vocal about it because I want to be the voice of the voice there's a lot of these agents they don't have anyone that can speak up for them and, and management sees the issues and they don't speak up Look at the whipping incident or the, or the, or the, yeah, the, the lies about whipping. Oh yeah. But, but the secretary of Homeland security, the commissioner, <clears throat> the chief of the border patrol, they knew it was a lie. Yeah. And yeah. they didn't ever speak up about it. So, you know, here we come again, the, the border patrol council, and we had to speak up about it because no one, no one else would, you know, just a month ago, <clears throat> a month ago, there was an incident here in Tucson at a coffee shop. It was two females, you know, Hispanic. One of them was Hispanic, and they went in into this coffee shop to get a cup of coffee downtown Tucson. Yeah, they were in uniform. They went in there, and the the uh, the girl behind the cash register, she turns around and she tells them, "Hey, get the f out of here. We don't serve border patrol here." Really? So they said, what? and she said, "We don't serve your kind." Wow. So the girls. 
they just left. They didn't even stay. They didn't argue. They were like, you know what? Whatever. We'll go get coffee somewhere else. They left. Yeah. They called me. They were upset. They called me and said, all right, this happened. And I said, I'll take care of it. I'll look into it. They didn't call management. They called me. Yeah. Right? So I I, I, I was cool. I called the coffee shop. And I said, hey, there was a couple of agents that were there, female agents. And, and I'm hearing that you guys denied them service. I want to get your side of it. The girl that answers the phone says, there was nobody here. So then I said, well, wait a minute. There's a customer that called me about it, complaining. So then she changed her story. And she says, oh, yeah, they were here, but they left. Yeah, they left because you wouldn't serve them, you dumb bitch. So I said, you wouldn't serve them. And she says, I don't know what you're talking about. And I said, look, I'm going to give you the opportunity to discuss it. And this is what I'm going to tell you. The person that called me is sending me the video of, of the incident. <laughs> Once she knew there was video, she said, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And she hung up. <laughs> so I blew it up on my social on my social media through Instagram, yeah. on my official Instagram page. I blew it up. Uh, it got a lot of, uh, of, of, of traction. People were upset. People were calling the coffee shop, you know, telling them why they'd reserve certain, they'd refuse to serve agents. So in lieu of all that, they put out an apology. So after they put out the apology, they started getting attacked by the radical left saying, why are you apologizing to the cops? And the right, border right. can't win with these can't people. Can't win. Yeah, they're nuts. So then they, so then they removed the apology. So it was just, it was a revolving door. And, 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 you know, I told them on, on through, through my show, I said, look, I'm going to give you the best advice. <clears throat> don't, don't, Serve border patrol agents. Stand, stand to your, stand, stick to your guns and say, "I'm not going to serve you." That way, you at least don't lose the crazy radical left with the with the Birkenstock sandals and the patchouli oil, right. because they are crazy. They will burn your place down. They don't care about the law. Yeah, law enforcement and, and, and the patriots—they're not going to go down there and, and, and burn your business. They're just going to boycott it. They're just never going to go. They're not going to go. Yeah. But that's how horrific it is, is that here you have a couple of individuals that are risking their lives. They're putting their lives on the line each and every day and 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 they get treated this way. And I will say the drug traffickers that are bringing drugs into our country, Don, they don't care who you vote for. Right. They right. don't care what side of the aisle you stand on. All they care about is bringing their drugs, their poison, their, their sex trafficking, into our country Getting your money so yeah yeah that's all they care about yeah and here we are arguing over a cup of coffee a cup of coffee yeah well, i mean well, that's that's simple compared to you know these idiots killing the cops now you know that that's just i had how fucking stupid are you people to, to want to kill the cops you know i mean sure the cops are paying the ass you know and they treat some some cops treat us bad. Some most cops treat us good. But there's a couple bad ones out there, yeah. But um, but there's no sense in killing all the all of them. Jeez, they're good fucking people, and they're protecting that the fucking. They're protecting, you know, your family and my family, and you know, knock that shit off, man. You know, that's what's crazy is that is that law enforcement, uh, it, it's one of the only ones and first responders as a whole. It's one of the only ones that you see when the media sees that they do something wrong, they're quick to say a border patrol agent, a police officer, a firefighter, you know, or former border patrol, former right. firefighter. Right. But you never hear them say, you know, a current UPS driver, yeah. a current Walmart clerk, you know, it's somebody that works at Starbucks, you know, yeah. it's, it's always... If you're in law enforcement and you do something bad, they sure as hell are going to let you know it. And, oh, they, you know, they jump all over you. Yeah. What, what does that mean? And that's where the, a lot of these issues come up, man. They're, you, they, they have law enforcement has unfortunately this big target. It's, I believe that that big target was, it was, was brought on more during the Obama administration, yeah, you yeah. know, and, and, oh, yeah. and, and you continued seeing it during the Trump administration because you had a lot of entities out there that would that were always talking about about you know law enforcement, uh, a lot of these groups that that called themselves you know um, 
activists or whatever the heck they want to call themselves, but they're they're hate groups against law yeah. enforcement. Yeah. And it's continued now during the the Biden administration. I was going to say the Kamala Harris administration, but it's the Biden administration. <laughs> Uh, fuck, man. What was the other question I had? God dang it. Um, oh, uh, what do you think about this bullshit going on over at Berkeley? You know, where they're saying a no Jew zone. You know, have you heard? Have you heard about that crap? You know, you you hear all these things and you wonder. Insane. Like, who are these people? Yeah. Who are these people? Where did they come from? Uh, it, you know. Um, it, People wonder if there's life on in outer space. You know, there's a reason aliens don't visit us, man. Yeah, yeah. And we're a mess down here. Uh, but yeah, when you start seeing that, it, it's the same as when when you see somebody in uniform, and I hear people say they throw the Nazi word around a lot, right? Right. right. And I'm thinking, stop throwing that word around because I think at the same time you're you're diminishing the the issues and how horrific. The, right. the Jewish people and what they had to endure. In oh, yeah, the Holocaust. Uh, nothing, nothing can compare to the Holocaust. Nothing, you know. They're, exactly. They're, people they're, need to stop genocide on, on a on a fucking level that will never be equaled or shouldn't be equaled. You know, and to compare, try try and compare anything to to the Holocaust is fucking insane. It's insulting. You know, those people should be punched in the fucking face. Yeah, well, you can't say that, Don, because they're going to come after you now and say you were threatening to punch people. Okay. <laughs> okay. Come on. <laughs> Bring it, huh? Yeah. It's always, good, it's always good chatting with you, man. It's always it's always a big pleasure. You know, to be honest. Nice. It's great, it's great seeing you. It's it's great being on your show. Um, Thank you. Like I said, I'm very grateful. Uh, on behalf of all the 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 agents out there uh, that are bargaining unit members within the National Board of Trade Council, they they. They are very grateful that you have this platform where they they're able to you know one express what's going on because there's so many people that don't listen they don't care but at the same time you know I I watch your shows all the time mm. uh, but you know people need to see that and, and see the hey you know there's a lot of people out there that have been grinding at it mm -hmm. actually talking about it for quite some time you're one of those guys that have been doing it for a while. You, you, you didn't just jump on the bandwagon. You're right. like me. You put one of the wheels on that bandwagon. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate what the fuck you guys do, man. It's amazing, you know. We we, we always worked with you and as a fireman, you know. We, you know, work in conjunction with you. And it's always, you guys are amazing, the shit you do, you know, the, and the bullshit you got to put up with. And and the other policemen, too. I mean, to, to have people call you and then fucking try and kill you or kill you you know it's just it's insane and uh then they get they get uh uh turned into a hero you know um the bad people do you know it's it's fucking insane what's going on in this world right now no definitely and you know look halloween's around the corner so i do want to remind all the parents out there that have kids and everyone that you know that you have these kids you, you hear it every year Check your child's candy. Check your child's yeah. candy. You know what? This year, uh, unfortunately, it's the time we live in. Go only get candy from areas that you know the people that you're getting them from. Don't just, you know, go around your neighborhood and say, oh, you know, people that you don't even know. Because there's weirdos everywhere. Right. If you don't know the person in your neighborhood, you probably not. You probably shouldn't go to his house anyway, even though he's in your neighborhood. Right. Go to areas that you know your kids are going to be safe because, unfortunately... Um, those are the times we're, we're living in right now, and I don't see any end in sight anytime soon, especially not under this administration. No, and they're not they're not prosecuting the fucking people too. Look, look what's going on in fucking New York and L.A. You know, shit. They just they let them get away with fucking you know assault, and battery, and almost murder. You know. Yeah, I mean, you look at those areas where where you have places like that, the sanctuary cities, and you know they got a real wake up call with a couple of buses and they were freaking out. They yeah. were freaking out for like 70 people showing up. Yeah. Well, you know what? Come on down here where we have hundreds of thousands. Showing yeah. Up. Yeah. We got a million fucking sneaking across. Yeah. Yeah. But then you got, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, up there in DC where, where the, where the, uh, the rich people live, Martha's yeah. vineyard. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in Massachusetts, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, in Massachusetts, they had their signs, right? They had their signs that said, you know, we welcome this and, you know, we're sanctuary. Boy, they took those signs down, those signs down. <laughs> real fast, real fast. And they use them to fucking beat those guys out of town. <laughs> it changed their mind real quick. Yeah, uh, but I think yeah. seeing people wake up a little bit more. I just saw Acosta Cortez did something in, you know, in, in her district and people were heckling her and telling her, you know, that, that they have a problem. So I think just seeing the movement little by little, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll say it again, man, and, and I'll say it nonstop. Uh, stop crowning people just because they showed up you mm -hmm. know we have heroes in in, 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 in around you got to just you know you start you got to start acknowledging them and stop getting excited over the latest flash in the pan with hot pants right right i don't know those, those hot pants are pretty fun man <laughs> <laughs> pretty good look at now now you got the uh biden administration trying to force Arizona to take down those trailers, right? <laughs> that's and that's the thing. It's 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 smoke and mirrors, Don, to be honest. Those those trailers that are up there, yeah, it's it's a big deal. And and right now you have different medias that are gonna come down here and start focusing on that. Right? Right. But but if you have that trailer there and people are just going a couple miles down and climbing the fence, you're still coming across. Right. And still claiming asylum. Shouldn't you focus on that? You know, if 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 that's happening in Yuma where they're worried about the trailers, but we're down here in Tucson, Arizona, and the majority of the gotaways are here, shouldn't we be talking about the gotaways as well? Yeah. And that's what's so frustrating. You know, I I mean it just I say that story on and on and I chuckle about it, about the reporter being down here and saying, hey, Art, can you get me video and pictures of the Godaways? I that's a, new, that's a new kind of stupid. You know that? It really is a new kind of stupid. You know? Oh, if I had pictures of the Godaways, they wouldn't be Godaways. They wouldn't yeah. Be <laughs> Jeez Louise. Oh, fuck, Art. Thank you very much, man. Hey man, thank you. It's always a pleasure, and, and and I'm I'm always willing to come on with you. All like right. I said, there's a lot of agents out there that see it. I remember uh, watching you in Pride, and I remember watching you in 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 the first UFCs, and uh, it's it's a funny story because I was living down in Douglas. Yeah. I was working at at, at the at the Sunnyside Fire Department, and we were at my house, and it was a room full of customs agents and border patrol agents in that room watching you take care of business. And, and little did I know that years later, not only would I meet you, but at the same time, I'd be on your show. And, and I want to thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My, my privilege, man. My privilege. Thank you so much, man. All right, brother. Thank you. Sir. Take care. Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm going to come to your house.